Hey everybody, this is my T-Bar Gudgeon tank and today we're going to be doing a water change on it and we're going to be clearing out some of the uh, more rough looking plants and we're going to be replacing them with some java fern. I just got done doing a big water change on my garami tank and while I was in there I removed quite a bit of java fern that was really blocking a lot of the light so I've got uh, several large pieces that can be cut up and divided into smaller pieces uh, so we're going to do a little bit of work in here today we have some plants in the back that are looking a little rough I can just go ahead and pull those out all together I've already got a little bit of java fern in here and I have some rocks that I can actually use as anchors my t-bar is a digger and he gets in here and he's responsible for all the sand you see on top of the rocks and the fact that there's a volcano in the middle of the tank that's all him he gets in here and he goes and picks up mouthfuls of food and I mean uh, sand and moves them around and scoops them up so plants generally don't do too well in here and I'm not really sure why but even the ones that stay rooted in don't seem to do very well in here these are temple plants and I have them in a lot of my tanks uh, mainly because they do well in my tanks I don't do much in the way of foods or ferts I don't do any co2 or anything like that so uh, I'm limited to what kind of plants will thrive in my tanks they generally have to be fairly easy care plants and temple plants definitely fall within the uh, category of easy care so I don't know why the temple plants don't do terribly well in here uh, maybe the rainbow fish or even the t-bar might actually chew on the plants or bite on them or something. I'm not sure. We do have a bunch that have been uprooted and broken apart and are floating in the top. I've got some all around my um, surface skimmer, so those need to come out. And if you're wondering where my gudgeon is, I was too before I started shooting the video. And I looked and looked and looked, and I finally found him under there that sort of thing under there is his silhouette and he's still alive I can see his mouth opening and closing but he's completely hidden and not coming out at all so I'm not really sure what's going on I've never seen him do that before uh, so we'll see we're gonna get in there and we're gonna do the water change and we'll see if that doesn't change his behavior so we're gonna do the before right now and then maybe in the after we'll get to see him being a little more active All right, so he was just hiding down there, no big deal. He came out as soon as I got in there and started doing the water change and disturbed the tank. I did uh, the water change. I wiped the glass down. I removed a bunch of the plants from the back and the top. I did wind up leaving the plants that were in the back alone. Uh, they had some other stuff sort of stuck in there and messed around with them. So I pulled those out and got it sort of cleaned out. I know it's hard to tell. I've got so much java fern in here now. But that temple plant in the back is actually rooted in and doing fairly well. I've got some rocks piled around the base of it, so the root system must be underneath of that. So even though it looks awful, it's actually still growing and doing well enough that I decided to leave that one alone. Uh, I've also got one of the temple plants right here that I left alone. Um, not sure what that little plant there is it's buried directly into the sand but that's still doing okay so I left that alone uh, I did tuck it a little deeper into the sand so that it would get a little uh, better opportunity to root in but mostly what is in here now is java fern that I have gently tucked between the rocks uh, java fern is a plant that grows based on a rhizome if you can see the sort of what you might uh, tend to want to call or think of the main root that you see all of the leaves coming off of that root is actually the rhizome and if you were to put it between two rocks and lean the rock on that to hold it in place uh, I believe what would happen would be you would get a dead spot where the pressure was being put on by the rock so what I do is I tuck all of the actual roots the sort of brown hairy looking stuff those are the actual roots not the rhizome and I tuck those underneath the edge of the rock and that holds it in place and eventually those roots will actually grab onto the rock 
and secure the plant to the rock and you won't need to keep it tucked in like that anymore uh, or if you do move the rocks around you'll actually have to tear apart some of the uh, root structure will bind everything together so there you go nice simple before and after um, not sure why the rainbow fish are getting so frisky and chasing each other around like that in there maybe they think uh, food's coming they're just starting to get excited and wound up but at any rate that is your after so I got other stuff to do today I got lots of tanks to work on so make sure you're subscribed you won't miss any of that I am in the process of working on my garami tank uh, as I mentioned I pulled a lot of plants out of there already and I need to get in there and finish up with uh, little tidbits here and there so make sure you're subscribed you won't miss the videos about that tank uh, or any else and don't forget this is my T-Bar and Gudgeon tank thanks for watching see you real soon in the next one